In our message, we will see that just as a farmer plants seed in his field so that it will grow, Jesus plants his word in our hearts so that we will grow. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Today's reading will be Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Harold's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. The Parable of the Sower While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. A lamp on a stand. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. Jesus' mother and brothers. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it 
into practice. This is the word of the Lord. Hi, my name is Dan Slofra. I'm the pastor at Crosswalk Church in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'd like to welcome you to our online message as we continue investigating Jesus, a walk through the Gospel of Luke. And today we're going to listen to a parable of Jesus as he tells the story of a farmer who plants seed. And by doing so, Jesus is giving the end game of of what he's trying to do in his ministry and how he wants to grow in his kingdom. And so that's the question we're going to answer today is how does Jesus grow his kingdom? And so we start in Luke chapter 8. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. And as we look at this, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but this is really loaded with information. First of all, Jesus is proclaiming good news. And when you think of of the gospel of Jesus, really it's proclaiming good news. And probably what I would say the, the closest thing we have to that proclaiming good news that you might see is the advertising that you get from a grocery store every week and the deals that they have. They're proclaiming good news. Chicken breast, $1.99 a pound. Your favorite cereal, buy one, get one free. And that good news is meant for you both to hear and then act upon. And in the same way as Jesus preached the good news of forgiveness of sins, it's an encouragement to act upon it. To say, first of all, recognize the sin problem that I have, but also to recognize that that God, through Jesus, has taken away that sin problem. And it causes us to act. It causes us to go to God, to go in confession and enjoy uh, this wonderful gift, that forgiveness of sins. Now, as we look at this too, it's of note to look at these individuals who followed him, especially the women. And I think one of the reasons why it stuck out to me this time reading through was that Easter was just a, a couple weeks ago. And at the resurrection, it was the women. They were the ones. These are the ones who, who went to the tomb first. And here, what we see is that they have been so blessed by Jesus and his ministry that they responded with gifts, that they were supporting them out of their own means. And at this time, I just want to take a moment to thank you who are listening, who helped support the crosswalk ministry so that we can proclaim the good news of Jesus and you support us out of your means. And so for for the gifts that you have given us, or if you're someone who wants to support us, you can go to our our website at cwlk.church and give a gift there and help to further the kingdom as these women did uh, directly with Jesus. And then finally, the final thing is Jesus went around and and he'd share the good news with anyone who would listen. And as I think about that, it makes me realize this is a good model for not only growing Jesus' kingdom, but for growing a church. That if you are someone who is a Christian and you want to grow the congregation you're a member of or here at Crosswalk, Just share the good news. That's what it's all about. Pointing people to Jesus and watching how that that news, that good news works in a person's life. Now Jesus goes on though and and is going to explain a little bit more. He says in verse 4, While a large crowd was gathering and the people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, it was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on the rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. 
When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And so Jesus is saying, really, his kingdom, he's using this story to show that he wants it to grow, that he wants his kingdom to grow. And what it makes me think of is, it makes me think of my lawn, uh, that at different times of year, we need to reseed down here in Phoenix. And so uh, sometimes uh, when I've done it, I haven't had a spreader. So I've had to throw that seed out by hand. And what I want is I want my lawn to grow. I want it to be green. I, I want it to look good. And in the same way, Jesus is saying, if you can relate to that, if you can relate to wanting a lawn to grow or a business to grow or, or you just want something to take off, his kingdom is like that. And, and he'll explain it a little more in a moment. But he goes, Luke 8, 9, and 10, uh, his disciples asked him what this parable meant. So it was a little confusing to them. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables so that though seen, they may not see, and though hearing, they may not understand. And with those words, Jesus was referring to Isaiah, who God said the same thing would happen. He's, he told him, tell in stories, tell them in illustrations. And the reason why was because there were enemies of this message. And he didn't want those enemies to be able to, to thwart his ministry. There would be a time when Jesus was very direct with them. And it makes me think in, in Matthew 23, uh, Jesus told them, Pharisees, teachers of the law, woe to you. And here are seven reasons why. And he was very direct with his criticism. And in, in Matthew 26, when asked if he was the Christ, he said, yes, I am. But the thing about it is, when Jesus was that direct with them, he was dead literally within 24 hours of saying that. And it wasn't time for him yet. And so this is just one of the reasons why Jesus spoke in parables, because it wasn't his time yet. Now, he does explain it, though, to his disciples, verse 11. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Again, the seed is the word of God. Don't miss that. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Now, as we look at these, we can go back and, and look at these different types of soil and so the first one that is on the, the hard ground makes me think of when I uh, was doing my lawn and I threw seed out there and it was like I had a pigeon farm in my backyard that every pigeon in Levine was there trying to eat this seed and that anyone who would have planted this could have related to this of having the pigeons or doves come and take it. But what Jesus is pointing to is, is really a hard heart. And, and he's pointing to the sin of pride where you just don't let God's word in. And when that happens, um, it's, it's going to be taken away from you. And I believe these were the first people, the ones where he had re referred to that they're seeing, though seeing they don't see, though hearing they don't understand. It's individuals who, because of their pride, said, I don't need this. I don't want this, Jesus, what you're giving me. And for that reason, it was taken away. And so the encouragement here for us is humility. That as we hear God's word, that, that we humble ourselves. It, it's what John the Baptist did to prepare the way. 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is here. Confess your sin. Break up that, that hard dirt and, and let the word of God come in, both convicting us of sin and pointing us to Jesus where there is forgiveness. The second, those, those on rocky ground are the ones who receive the word of God and when they hear it, uh, they, they, they like it with joy, but they have no root. And therefore, when it starts to get hot out, and the seed, again, it makes me think of my yard where it starts to grow and it's like, all right, this, it, I'm going to get a lawn after all. And then the 100 degrees, 110 degrees comes and it, it just burns it out. And the point there is that as it has no root, really what's happening is the people who hear God's word and are excited about it get pushed back. That, that, that things heat up in their lives where they have what God says and what the world says and it's like, okay, which of these am I going to follow? And ultimately, they, they fall. And th- this just makes me think of, of people um, at church, we have a box to sign if you're interested in membership or I want to grow my relationship with God. And I follow up with people, all the people who do that, And about 50% of the people who sign up, I'm interested in membership, actually make it to a membership class. They like the idea on that day. They're excited about it. Church went well. And then they kind of go a a different direction and they, you know, they forget about it or they, they just don't continue to go. This also makes me think of culture. That what happens when I hear what Jesus says and I have the authority of culture in which I live say something different. And so when Jesus says he's the only savior from sin and and that we must confess our sin and turn to him for forgiveness, what happens when I go against a world that has a message of there's no such thing as sin, there's no universal truth, that, that you can do whatever you want? Or today, I think even more as we think about how culture spills into our society with issues like abortion. And, and in Arizona, this is a big deal right now, that, that we look at this and that we recognize, no, this is, it, it's wrong. It's taking the life of an unborn baby. And yet, culture pushes back and says, no, it's not. Or, or even might recognize that it is, but, but still doesn't protect that life sexual issues, how we use our our sexuality, gender, all of these different things, God speaks to with authority. And what I notice more and more is people are are being overwhelmed by culture, letting it come into their lives and they they burn out. That the the gospel that they've received with joy, they don't take it and let the root go deeper and live it in their lives. So again, when pushback comes, We go back to the authority and recognize Jesus as the authority from God in all of these issues for all of our life. The next one, he he goes on, and those are the ones that are choked. What I find interesting is they're choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures. So it's choked by good things and bad things. And this makes me think of of a lawn that just gets overrun with weeds and uh, a lot of times in the spring, dandelions. Uh, I remember where I grew up, there would just be, the you couldn't even see the lawn because it was so yellow with dandelions. And the thing about it is some people like that because they said, well, it's better than nothing growing or it's kind of green and it's kind of yellow, I guess. And in the same way, we're talking about the, the other things in life that choke faith. These can be things that are, are good things. They can be blessings. They can, it can be the blessing of having a boat. It can be the blessing of having a cabin. It can be the blessing of having kids that are good in sports or on sports teams. A bunch of things like that. But when those things continue to grow and, and faith continues to be secondary, that, that what it says is they, it doesn't mature, your faith doesn't mature, that you're a bunch of spiritual children and after a while, those other things choke out faith, that they, 
they, faith lives in the shadow of that for so long that it ultimately dies. And then maybe the, the last one that I look at there is, is that you don't want to wait. That, that you want to plant the seed and you want something to be there right away. And, and the way that I would uh, liken it, obviously, a seed, you plant it and it's months before it grows and you're able to harvest. That I have individuals who come to me and maybe they have some marriage issues. And I give them some suggestions on, on steps they can take. And after two days, they say, you know what? I've been nice to my wife for two days and it's not working. I'm going and doing something else. And God's word is not like that. God's word is planted in the heart and it takes time. It takes time for people to change and grow, but it does happen over time. And then finally, that's the great part, right? Where, uh, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a good crop. And that makes me think of, of, of a wheat field and when you see one uh, that each stalk of grain that comes up has the potential for a hundred more uh, stalks that, that it, it, those things can go and they are seeds, they can be planted. And in the same way, Christians who, who continue to grow in God's word are individuals who share that good news as well. Because God's word is effective. The good news is effective and that's why we share it. And that's how God grows his kingdom. Jesus goes on and says, No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, and this is huge, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken away. This is talking about no one has that light and hides it. This is the word of God. And he's saying the word of God needs to be put out there. And it needs to be bright and clear for the whole world to see. That's Jesus' plan. And his message to you and to me is very clear. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. You see all of these different things that can happen in life. As you listen to it, listen carefully and live carefully. And so my question for you as you do this is, what are you trying to grow in your life? What are you trying to grow? That if your life is a field, what are you trying to do? One answer I have for you is the answer of what Crosswalk is trying to grow. And it's in our mission statement. And in the mission statement, it's, this is what we have. Crosswalk is committed to teaching the Bible's words and promises so that the Holy Spirit will transform people into fully developed followers of Christ. We're trying to grow disciples. And, and for that reason, as we think about culture, the things that we're trying to grow versus what are weeds, that, that we are directing people to God's word to try to help them to weed out sin from their lives, to weed out distractions, to make God's word the priority, to connect with him and other Christians both in worship and in groups and on ministry teams. This is what we do because disciples is what we are trying to grow. Couple things coming up. We have Christian Essentials 2, which is a, a place where people are learned to, uh, or taught to grow. That they are shown how to go and do devotions and be, have God's word part of their life and be a self-feeder in faith. An encouragement that if you don't know how to do that, that you need to understand that. You can email me, dan at cwlk.church and and ask me, can you teach me? Can you let me know what Christian Essentials 2 is all about? And I'm happy to do that. Our Bible Basics classes as well. Just happy to share to help people grow. And then finally, the, the final thing that Jesus does is shows you kind of what his end game with you is and what your end game can be as well. In verse 19, now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. 
but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. And with those words, they can seem kind of harsh to Jesus uh, or to Jesus' mom, to Mary and, and the brothers. But, but it's not meant to be that as much as it is to, to help us understand what Jesus is doing. He's growing. He's growing his kingdom, but he's also growing his family. And that is the beauty and the honor of what we have as we continue to hear God's word and put it into practice. That he not only calls you a member of his kingdom, he calls you a member of his family. That's God's plan for you. That is God's plan as you hear his word to grow closer to him. And I pray that it is what you are trying to grow in your life as well. To grow your faith, to grow your dependence on him, to grow an understanding of him. And then that you take those next steps to make it happen. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for proclaiming the good news. We thank you that you are the the farmer who plants the seed, that you are the farmer who plants your word. You are the God who, who shares the good news with all people. And now, Lord, help it to take root in our lives. Send your Holy Spirit. Help us to weed and hoe our lives to get things out of the way that that challenge your word and help us to continue to grow and let that word grow in our hearts and let us grow closer to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Give me joy more than my share.